you can teach about uh, fighting racism, for example. You can teach kids in school. But you can maybe, instead of teaching them about fighting racism, you can just show them the beauty of other culture. The last thing that will die is hope. We don't have the privilege to be scared. We don't have the privilege to be tired. We don't have the privilege to be hopeless. The essence of what I do in my, in, a, in my project is to be director from the outside. Uh, directors like Woody Allen and Spike Lee that are writing the scripts, like I write the songs, or they, and then they're, they're casting uh, good actors, like I'm casting amazing singers. And then sometimes they are also playing one of the roles, like I'm playing the piano part or singing and all my singers are singing in their own uh, native languages. So we have a song from uh, the, the language is Amharic from Ethiopia, or Spanish from Colombia, German, or uh, Yemeni dialect. And suddenly it became, not in other, like in other countries, that you would think that it's a very world music uh, project, it became the mainstream of Israel. You turn on the, the radio at the prime time radio and you hear the voices of the real people in the streets or the minorities even. We didn't know that it would be such a huge uh, uh, movement. We felt suddenly that we are building the, 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 the bridges between all those cultures. I love it, I love it. When I look back now and I see like one, over 150 singers and musicians in the Idan Reichel Project. The youngest is 16. The elder die, elders are like 83 and 91 years old. I think, wow, what a beautiful thing. Everyone share their contribution and the key was the acceptance. The acceptance and just really to love the differences between us. In my project, there are extremely right-wing people, extremely left-wing. These people, if they were in the same place in the street, they would fight from morning till night. They go into the studio, they go travel around the world, they make music together. It's beautiful. This is what it is. Yom echad ze ikre Mli shenargish ma shu ishtane Ma shu iraga banu, ma shu iga banu I was born in Farsava and, uh, uh, to, and both of my parents are, uh, were born in Farsava. My, my mother came there when she was like one year old and, uh, and uh, our, our background is from uh, former USSR and from Poland and from Germany. But it's such a long time uh, that we are in Israel, so I feel that my, my, uh, my roots are from Israel. Not like um, you know, some of my singers and my musicians, they feel that they are Israeli who came from uh, Morocco, Israeli who came from the refugee camps of Sudan, Israeli who came from Addis Ababa. I feel that I'm Israeli, who was born in Israel and very Israeli. I feel that I'm writing from the bottom of my heart. 
and I'm writing about people. For those of people who are not familiar with our country, it's, uh, it's one of the most interesting melting pots. The people came from different parts of the world. Every 10 or 15 years, there is a huge immigration that changed the face of the Israeli society. So I think that the sound of the melting pot, the, 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 the taste of the melting pot, is the Israeli root. I want to believe that when people listen to my songs, to my, they can feel or associate with the soundtrack of uh, my beloved country. When I was working in a boarding school, there was a group from teenagers from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and a group from former USSR. And they were totally disparate. De uh, separate. They were not even connect to any, any, by any means. A few years after, when I came back to this boarding school and I saw that the, the Russian kids singing the Ethiopian, you know, hook line, na -nu -na -nu -na, and I thought to myself, wow, it's really happening. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> d'Israël, c'est un juif, moi je viens du Mali, je suis musulman. Ça montre à quel point il n'y a pas de, de différence entre les personnes. Moi j'apprends un peu avec lui et lui il apprend un peu avec moi, c'est comme ça. C'est pour comprendre mieux les autres et que les autres puissent mieux te comprendre. When Vifa Kature, coming from a Muslim country, that his region was taken by the Al-Qaeda, and people are listening to his voice and the mainstream radio of Israel, it's opened their heart, it's opened their minds. These are the moments that we create hope. <laughs> Je dirais c'est difficile, ne t'en va pas, je te réponds. Ne me laisse pas seul, mon amour, ne me laisse pas seul. Je dirais c'est si difficile. People till today don't know my political view. People might think that I'm very right-wing. People might think that I'm very left-wing. The reason that I didn't, I've never talked about my political view is because I always feel that I'm the leader, that when I'm giving the interview, it's around 150 singers and musicians that are behind me. Moi, aujourd'hui, en tant que Papa Armand Boy, artiste musicien venant du Sénégal, musulman, croyant, moi, les Idan Rachel que je connais, que j'ai côtoyé quand même depuis des années, moi, je dis en toute sincérité, et je pèse là, je pèse mes mots, c'est quelqu'un de profondément humain. 
C'est quelqu'un de profondément humain, c'est quelqu'un qui respecte l'être humain parce que nous avons déjà rencontré des gens qui ne nous respectaient pas. People who are demonstrating uh, all over the world uh, against Israel, boycotting Israel, first of all, we need to remember that these people care. So first of all, I respect that they care. I don't agree with them. First and foremost, because their uh, intention is to make our, to mute our uh, sound, uh, our, our voice. And I think that the, the, best, the best that they can do is to promote more art from other regions. Eden Rachel is part of the Israeli government's Brand Israel public relations campaign. It was one of the it was one of the biggest questions of my band. As I told you, we are uh, so many uh, musicians and singers from the left wing, uh, from the right wing, and from the left wing of the map. We took a decision to perform everywhere. I will be the first one to perform in Gaza. I'll be the first one to perform in Damascus. I'll perform in Iran. I'll perform in Ramallah. I'll perform everywhere to promote our message of acceptance. <laughs> it's a tricky question because if you will decide not to perform in this place of the map, one day someone will tell you, don't perform here. So it has nothing to do with, uh, with politics. My will is to that there will be singers, musicians from neighboring countries, Palestinian singers, Lebanese, Iranian, Syrian, that we will learn to see the people across the border as our neighbors before we see them as enemies. I think that this we, we can bring something. I would work towards this also through music. <laughs> The intention at the first place was to create music. I don't believe that you need to go in the studio and write songs like peace, oh, I love you, let's be together. Because it sounds like almost like a marketing ad. There is no foundation of good music. <laughs> What is a real peace? If you ask people, do you want peace? They will tell you, yes, we want peace. Then they will ask, then you can ask them, why do you want peace? So they will say to you, because we don't want war. So people has a misconception that peace is the opposite of war. But the opposite of war is no war. It's got nothing to do with peace. <laughs> Peace 
is the willing that I can't wait till the borders will be open so I can go and listen to my favorite singer from Iran, that I can go and see the film festival in Lebanon, that people from, from Iraq will come to listen to our concert in Tel Aviv. My biggest will is just to, to be able to take the car, cross the border, and to create a song. It can be a party song. It can be a song about trees. I don't need it to be titled, The Borders Are Open, Let's Be Friends. Yes, <laughs> this was a long answer, sorry. <laughs> Je dirais tes poèmes, chanterais tes chansons, il peindrait tes je t'aime sur toutes les maisons. that people will be open with their heart to listen, to know that in conflict area, you cannot seek, seek for truth because the truth has so many angles. The empathy, the hope, the belief is something that you must be led by these things. The last thing to die is hope.